This is Ada Verna's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. A very good evening and welcome to this special episode of Get Real, our continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. Uh, I am here with Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavindra Silva and also Admiral Jainath Kolumbagi. Uh, they are members of the COVID task force that have been established to take care of the current crisis here in Sri Lanka. Let's get uh, directly to the discussion. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being here once again and uh, accepting my invitation to uh, come on board. Lots of things to discuss about. Army Commander, if I start with you, uh, yesterday uh, the third person uh, died, uh, demise due to COVID complications. Uh, uh, he's a 72-year-old uh, individual from uh, Maradana, which is close to our studios here. Uh, now there's a quarantine uh, um, uh, effort is underway in that particular area. Can you just uh, brief us exactly what's the latest on this crisis? Yeah, of course. Unfortunately, one person died last uh, evening. Of course, uh, at that time, uh, there was a bit of a confusion whether we've been house or uh, self-quarantine or whether the area will be uh, blockaded and all that. But uh, none of them, I mean, His Excellency, the President, the Prime Minister, no one wanted to have a thing like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you know that uh, the houses, it's a three-story uh, three building complex, I, the way that I know. And uh, we are always worried about as to how, uh, when a person get confirmed from Corona, how many contacts that they had and uh, how it has spread, it has gone beyond only to a particular area or the beyond. So uh, there are a lot of considerations when we consider mm -hmm. uh, for such things. So as of now, it's only a few hours uh, since then. Uh, initially, we have actually kept the area under surveillance. And uh, as of now, with the information what we are getting, uh, uh, how many he had contacted and all that, most likely uh, the case would be that uh, like what we did in Beruela, like what we did in Nigambo, most likely to ensure the safety of the people of that flats and the people whom he had got contacted, most likely the option would be that uh, all of them who have got contacted with them will be taken to a quarantine center. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, at times you find that the houses are small and a lot of people are living in one particular house. So it's not uh, just trying to quarantine one particular place, but we have to ensure the safety of the numbers inside one house also. Mm -hmm. We have seen uh, in the past uh, in Igambo, so one person getting infected and after that all five, including a four-month-year-old baby getting infected from Corona. So we can't allow that to happen. So His Excellency the President, the Prime Minister uh, have discussed and already that is how we got uh, uh, Beruel yesterday. Uh, so therefore most likely the possibility is that they will be quarantined in a quarantine center, not in a house or self-quarantine. Indeed, uh, Army Commander. Uh, Admiral, uh, one of the questions that keeps arising with regard to this quarantine uh, uh, process is the fact that after quarantine, they're self-quarantining in, 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 in their houses. Is that effective? Is that, I mean, can't these people actually continuously contract it to other people uh, despite the fact that they stay in the houses? Because even in the news, we actually uh, saw like certain people when, when the food carts come by, they come out of the mm -hmm. house, they try to engage, that kind of this thing. So um, is, is it effective? Well, um, you see this self-quarantine or house quarantine is a concept that uh, the pra practice world over. But you see, it depends on few other factors. The size of the house, uh, how many people are living in that house? How many people are living in the close neighborhood, right? So it doesn't really mean that, uh, I think that's why General explained, uh, we have to now determine whether we are inviting or asking them to be self-quarantined in their own house, which I think has not worked. Of course, it may have worked in some places where you have enough space uh, for a person who is isolated from the rest of the family, who has access to a separate wash bathroom, uh, then it can work. But if you have one common toilet and maybe one or two rooms in a house full of uh, people, this cannot work. So that's why I think the new uh, strategy that, you know, should there be some uh, positive cases that 
probably they would be taken to a quarantine center which is actually equipped to look after people under quarantine you know there is like this uh, social distancing or the physical gap between people and then there is medical staff to look after there the army is uh, in charge of that and the doctors keep visiting and they are being monitored on a regular basis so that will definitely work and we know that it has worked mm -hmm. i mean now uh, uh, we have quarantine large number of people and maybe nearly 1500 to 2000 people are now out of quarantine centers and i think i would say 100% success because none of them were contracted or infected while they were in the quarantine center mm -hmm. so we have to be now mindful yes house quarantine or self quarantine we can advise but the practicality or the efficiency of that concept is a big doubt we have so that's why i think the best way, even for the family, I mean, if a person in that family is infected, it is really good for the rest of the family members to be quarantined in a proper quarantine center. So I think that's a new strategy that we are now working on, discussing on, and I think we may have to go for it in the future uh, because, you know, we uh, some of our houses are not as yes. big as others. They are small and they live in a small community and the chances of an infected person spreading it to the others are really, really high. And we have seen it in with uh, evidence in Putlam, uh, in Kaluthara, in Atolugama, in Akurana. We have seen it with evidence. So we have to be uh, mindful of that fact. Um, Amikamanda, very recently, uh, about two days back, we saw the numbers spike. Uh, the highest uh, cases found on a single day, 20, uh, was found. And, and one of the uh, fear that uh, spread all across the country was the fact that has, has your team, the, the, the COVID task force, have you all managed to map as to who these people have interacted? 20 is a large number, which means they have interacted with a large population. So have you all managed to do that? Yeah, of course, we have been 100% effective. As of today, this is the success story that, that we can talk because you see that uh, the, uh, the incident that you are referring to, we found a person came from uh, Indonesia uh, and uh, Thailand uh, after a trip. We found three groups of that nature who came to Sri Lanka on the 13th, 15th and the 17th. So one such person got confirmed from Corona in Putlam. Mm -hmm. So what we did was, yes, uh, we went through the contacts that he made, then secondary contacts by them, all the details. We have a very efficient system as of now. Mm -hmm. One day we will talk. Yes. We will wait for that, yes. okay? So we can talk. So that is very successful. This is a very good example that you took. So what we did was, we identified these contacts and uh, spoke to the president, the prime minister, and president decided, yes, we should uh, get them uh, to a quarantine center. Now, this is the first time from the society we are establishing a quarantine center. Mm -hmm. Up to that, what we had was people who came from abroad, brought to quarantine centers, and we had 48 quarantine centers, and we went up to beyond 3,600 we quarantined, and as Admiral said, we were 100%. There. Now here, what happened was, first time we are establishing a quarantine center because of that, and we got 88 uh, of them to be quarantined. As Admiral said, here in this house, you find one room, one bedroom house, and you find five to six, seven people living there. So definitely, we can preach, we can tell, we can, like you all, the media are doing a huge job. Every media is doing a huge job. You can tell, but you find, after all, telling to keep social distance, you find the curfew lifted, how they behave on roads. Then what do you think inside the house? <laughs> we will not see. We don't have cameras to see. So, so there's, there's a limit that we can afford. Be a government is responsible to look after the to protect the people of this nation. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this decision was taken by His Excellency the President and the Prime Minister, and the army was once again uh, tasked to establish a quarantine center in Putlam, close by. So uh, Putlam East, we established a quarantine center with 88 people. Now, what happened thereafter? We went with these contacts and we found, yes, this 88 was brought, but we found that 
few have contacted very closely. So usually up to two days back till this incident, usually what happens is a person, only a suspected person with the symptoms are checked for this quarantine. The PCR test is done yes. for either they should have symptoms and the doctor feel that now it's time to do a PCR test, the corona test in labor yes. language. So that is how uh, people have been doing that. On this particular day, because we have seen this uh, contracts, the way that you are contracted, so request we requested a PCR test to be conducted for some of these people. So the uh, the the health authorities came to the quarantine center, got the samples, and uh, 19 of them were tested, and we found for the first time 10 are confirmed. Those who do not even had any symptoms, okay? This is on a suspicious basis, we did that. So therefore, to once again, to go back to your question, yes, we have a very successful story here as to how we monitor. That is why we said, even during the war time, our intelligence was so good. We found not only the house, behind the house, the bunker, we managed to bomb such places. I mean, we were specific and 100% there, you see? Uh, so accurate. It's the same thing, it's happening here. We are so accurate right now. That is why when President started off his policy uh, on current COVID-19 to uh, prevent the, uh, the COVID-19 or eradicate from Sri Lanka, he had containment, the spreading, and then he had to ensure that the people are being, those who get confirmed to look after. So this is how we started. So we have done that. And intelligence, uh, the military, then uh, police, and especially the health sector, they are monitoring. And that is why we went up to beyond 28,000. 28,200 like. This is within the quarantine. We, yeah, that, that was a house quarantine, okay? Even them, we knew exactly who they are, what all their contacts, and we are monitoring, even up to now. Of course, some people after the fifth or first second, then tenth, we are not now considering, but we did that. So this was successful, that is how we found this. Indeed, uh, I want to talk uh, more about uh, with regard to the burial process and also there are certain uh, rumours uh, flying on social media. I want to get a response from the Army Commander, but before that, let's take a short commercial break. You're watching Get Real, our special coverage on the coronavirus crisis. This is Ada Verana's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. This is Ada Verana's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. Welcome back everyone to Get Real, our special coverage on the coronavirus crisis. I'm here with Army Commander Lieutenant General Shalindra Silva and also Admiral Dr. Jayanath Kulamge, uh, who are members and uh, who are the men who are, who's leading the task force established to curtail the current COVID-19 crisis here in Sri Lanka. Uh, Army Commander, um, there was like very recently um, community started, uh, you know, rebelling back. This was with regard to the Muslim communities uh, who we heard the fact that, you know, the burial process, they wanted it to be done in a certain way, but the government says it should be done in the way the World Health Organization has recommended uh, so that, you know, it will not continuously spread. Uh, what is the, the reality of this? If, are you all considering the faith here, or are you all considering the risk factor uh, when, when, when processing these individuals who have demise because of COVID-19? Of course, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I have to tell about this. Uh, we are not the authority. I am not the authority, neither admiral. Mm -hmm. The authority lies with the uh, Director General Health Services. He is the authority in Sri Lanka. But since you have asked this question, mm -hmm. uh, being in the uh, operation center, I should be able to answer something. Uh, yes, this was actually, there was a rumor also, you, must, you would have seen mm. that uh, a group of uh, this community came to meet me, yes. not for this reason. Mm -hmm. They came for some other reason. They were actually brought to uh, 
educate, uh, actually get their assistance to educate the community. You're referring to this uh, picture which uh, two individuals from the Muslim faith having a discussion with you. Uh, where later it was uh, uh, said uh, all around social media saying that you agreed that uh, if by any chance a person dies, a person from the Muslim faith dies due to cor uh, coronavirus or uh, complications from COVID-19, that they would be buried. Yeah, is that true? Yes. No, I'm not. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. It is the story that I'm referring to. It is the story that I'm referring to. I have to be very specific in this region. Actually, that is what I brought uh, some people wanted to see and to discuss about the coronavirus and how things are happening and especially uh, when we actually had uh, uh, to quarantine to uh, to villages, actually village and a town or corona and uh, so we, we, we wanted to have a discussion on that. So we were discussing on that. But uh, the picture, yes, I know who took the picture because it was in our yeah, headquarters. Right. So he accepted the, who, who took the picture, but he himself said that he never mentioned like that. He just shared the picture within the people, not only two people. There are more than 10 people who came for the meeting. So he said that he had shared the picture, but he was not aware until I told that somebody had written mm -hmm. something else. How can I get, how give promises like that? I'm not the Director General Health Service. I have no authority whatsoever there. But only thing, when, when we discussed the other thing that what we brought uh, to discuss, at the end of the day, uh, at the last minutes, that they spoke about their concern about this uh, issue. So uh, all what I told them uh, was that I will convey this, their concerns. Only thing that I can do is to convey the concerns that they discuss at our meeting. That's all. So uh, they, I, in fact, uh, my officers contacted this particular person, especially the person who took the picture and some people. Then soon after that, they put a, I think, release on this, like a, a press release sort of a thing. They did that and they said, no, they never told something like that. It's somebody created this and told, and especially I have to tell the people of this nation, how can I give authority like that? I'm not the director general health services or I have no authority to tell like that. Mm -hmm. So you asked about the question about this burial thing. Yes, uh, I mean, the guidelines are given by uh, the, the WHO and various other organizations give guidelines. And the director general goes through all that. And at the end of the day, you ask two things, whether it's the, uh, the rituals, the systems of that, okay. or whether the... Uh, whether are we, are we take, considering the risk factor? Risk factor. So, uh, so at the end of the day, most likely, everybody must understand why this COVID-19 uh, task force has been formed, everything is done to ensure the risk factor is the zero. So this is the, I think the government has decided already what should be the uh, course of action for such uh, type of deaths. And that will be the thing, and we have to adhere to that. Mm. Albera, what is, the, what is your take? Uh, you, you are working with the government very closely, and you are actually, actually establishing uh, you know, um, certain processes as we go on. This has never happened in our history. We have never come across something like this in, in modern history. So this is like first time we are going mm -hmm. through this. What, what kind of a, 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 you know, a action plan are you looking at to make sure that you know, we have to do, I mean, at the end of the day, yes, we have to respect certain uh, religious norms and mm -hmm. these things, but then again, it cannot precedent um, the risks towards communities and a country. Well, I mean, you ask about the strategy. In fact, when we started this uh, Corona Action Committee and then the task force, we were, we were evolving as we were going alone. But now, of course, uh, we got together and we have planned a long-term strategy covering each sector, whether it is the medical sector, the social sector, economic sector. So there is a proper strategy is in place. And there are various subcommittees appointed to handle uh, various committees. And now that report is being uh, formed into one comprehensive report. So even yesterday we had a meeting with General. So we discuss about it. So that strategic part, yes, in the beginning we did not have a long-term strategy because as you said, this is something which came all of a sudden. But you see, the I think the best part in Sri Lanka and the success story so far is we were taking action before it became an issue in the country. 
we were proactively taking action. The president, I think one of the first days when the Wuhan uh, crisis started, he created an action committee. And, and he said, take action. And then our airport, I think there was a report in the BBC. They were interviewing a person yes. who had gone back from uh, Sri Lanka to Heathrow. And he was of full praise about the arrangements or the mechanisms. So that means, now even General mentioned about the World Health Organization. Yes, we take all the guidelines from the World Health Organization. But even before the World Health Organization declared this as a pandemic and gave out direction, we were having our own directions in Sri Lanka and we were implementing it. So that is basically the initiative by the president who took a very proactive, far-sighting initiative even before it was a concern for the rest of the world other than China. So that is one uh, success we have. Now, about the sentiments of a community, yes, we are a multi-ethnic, multi-religious community, but this is not the time for us yes. to think about our faith, our community. This is a time to talk about science. This is a time to talk about medicine. This is the talk. This is the time to talk about a virus, right? Now we know that the virus can get into a medium like a human body, and it can stay there for a long time. Now, unless we so so just to uh, uh, clarify, uh, if by any chance once it gets into a human body, the whole uh, things that we've heard before saying that, you know, it can last for eight hours on a glass surface or whether it can uh, last for 10 hours on, on a, on a uh, wooden surface, that is not the case. Now, this is like for a longer term, it can and it can s survive. I think, but I don't think the scientists are even, even the scientists are clear how long it will last in a human body. Now, see, if a person is dead, because of the coronavirus, that means he's not cured. That means the virus is very active in his body at the time of his death. Now we bury him, right? Say, for example, we bury him and we really do not know how long that virus will last in that body, right? Now we bury him in on, under the right. soil, yeah. right? And now, you know, Sri Lanka is a, a small island nation. Our water table is quite high. Right, six feet, seven feet, some places you get water table, right? Now imagine such a body contaminating the water, not immediately, maybe six months time, one year time, two years time, then what will be the situation in the country? So that is why the World Health Organization has given some guidelines how to, how to dispose the body. So there, I think we have to now give in to science, right? And the, and the, the risk factor. Now, this, many people predict this virus cannot be eradicated in a month or two. Mm. But then also they fear that it can come back again after a few months. So we have to factor all these considerations in and we have to minimize the risk, uh, risk and we have to close down every possible avenues for the growth of the virus. So this is the time not to be very sensitive about or sentiment about what you believe but it, this is a time to give into science. This is not a normal situation. This is not a normal riot or not even war. This is a sickness. This is a virus. This is a health issue. Indeed, a very good thing uh, to ponder upon. But uh, I want to talk more about what's happening here in Sri Lanka, how we will go ahead uh, with the current situation. Are we going to see more curfew? Are we going to see, uh, you know, uh, our way of life returning back to normalcy? Well, what is normalcy going to be? Uh, is it going to be something completely different than what we are used to? Let's talk all about that. But before that, let's take a short commercial break. This is Get Real, our special coverage of the coronavirus crisis. This is Ada Verana's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. This is Ada Verana's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. Welcome back everyone to Get Real. This is our special coverage on the coronavirus crisis. I'm here in conversation with Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavindu Silva and also Admiral Dr. Jainal Kulamage. Um, Army Commander, um, one of the things that is keep highlighting is the fact that when will curfew be you know, over and what kind of uh, normalcy can we expect? And uh, there are certain uh, other um, 
not not per se accusation but but concerns raised is the fact that you know why why certain areas have been cordoned off why certain uh, uh, villagers have been cut off from the rest of the public uh, is it really because there's covid-19 cases or is it just you know done uh, out of precaution uh, what's your response to this yeah of course about the first question we all would like to see that tonight the curfew <laughs> is finished covid is gone out of the country these are the things that everyone every citizen of this country not only every citizen even the world health organization even the secretary general of united nation also must be wanting to see that at least one country come out like this we, that is our hope and that is what we are working for but unfortunately as of today uh, it all depends on the people of this nation how our people are going to behave will decide for how long that we are going to go that is the all sick that we have to think of no other reasons we can have the best of we know that we have the best very uh, knowledgeable doctors who are very really professionals we have in our country but what can they do what can they do we have taken the procedure and the prime minister we all have taken uh, the best steps the best practices we are putting into practice as uh, admiral said yes we have planned we have got strategies well in advance we are working on a strategy we are not just going we are not going like that but everything is in place but at the end of the day the curfew and hours and when we are going to finish all that depends on the self discipline of the people of this nation if we behave well if we keep our uh, physical distance if we practice the best practices what the, our professional doctors are asking us to practice then we can see but we can't forecast we can't foresee immediately as of now we believe we wish we pray that we will soon as soon as possible we will eradicate covid 19 from sri lanka the second question that you ask about why some village or the township why only that yes few days back at the time that we found one uh, who came from uh, from india uh, and uh, from akurana who got uh, covid 19 confirm and before that two days back uh, from ataduwagama mm. uh, uh, in kaluthara between panadura and kaluthara where we found one person there so we found at ataduwagama if i start talking of that ataduwagama the village that village has lot of people there and we found that there were he, this particular gentleman had lot of contacts uh, by then as intelligence uh, contacts as in he has visited the houses houses oh. spoken to lot of people visited the so things like that so we got all together about 20 of such people to a quarantine center but while doing that that is the close contacts we managed to get it to a quarantine center but we found that those people also have contacted many people so the best thing is the government intention is to ensure that the people are protected mm. so therefore we managed to we wanted to have a sort of a isolate that village from the rest of the people we have seen how many people because this village has very close by you get another villages they will try to go in and out so therefore we know that is little bit of inconvenience to the people but to ensure that their own safety we had to isolate that village then came to akurana akurana same thing akurana we found a person there and we isolated that we have proven the decision was correct by yesterday day before you know from ataluwagama how many cases confirmed and same yesterday akurana about 2 to 3 cases were confirmed so i think every action will have a reaction but that reaction will be diffused within no time by the system that is what we have done uh army commander uh, very quickly uh, when you say cordoning off areas cordoning off villages that does not mean you're completely cutting them off not giving them supplies uh, you know completely they are like on their that's not the case no definitely not that is only the people who have no entry and exit that's it that is for the people they the have population to eat yeah but the fact is that all the supplies are going you would have seen on your tv and other tv channels that uh, the vehicles the food supply that is for the people of that then the medical everything is gone inside the village they distribute they come to the uh, gate they get that all that is happening but only thing uh, the people are not allowed to go out or people are not allowed to come in 
uh, Admiral, uh, this, uh, like the Army Commander said, this is a new world order. Mm -hmm. we, we, going forward, there is no other way. We will have to change our lifestyle. We have to change our behavior uh, and so on. Uh, the GMOA uh, recently came and said, now we are at a 3.A, level 3.A mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. entire pandemic, which is like, you know, uh, going, uh, this entire thing mm -hmm. is spreading to communities and uh, so on. Uh, do you agree with that assessment? Do you think we're there? And if so, what exactly, uh, what kind of additional steps have been taken by the government to make sure that it doesn't go to the next level? Well, I mean, if you uh, look at the spread of the virus, the stage one is an individual getting infected. Stage two is an individual giving to another person. Now the stage three or three alpha or three A is basically a small community or a small household getting infected and touch wood, that is the stage Sri Lanka is right now in. Now 3B is actually the community spread. Now the community spread is directly proportionate to the mobility of people. Now you ask the question about curfew. Now if we can continue, if, if we can curtail the mobility of people to about 80%, that means 80% of people not moving, then that curve, like with the, I mean, the detection and curing the virus will be much better. But if we allow like 50, 70%, we will take a longer time to come back to the normalcy. So this mobility factor has a direct bearing on the possible spread of coronavirus. So therefore, right now, I think the president is very clear on this. Uh, he is going on three principles. One is restricting the mobility mm -hmm. of the identified high-risk areas. The other one is aggressive testing. Now, testing, testing, testing. You know, you have to test people even when they do not show symptoms. That is uh, a, a now new thing in this yeah. work. Right? And the third one is providing whatever the required facilities to our hospital. Now, when you combine these three factors, and if we can maintain a very minimal mobility of people and aggressive testing and getting ready to enhance the facilities in the hospital sector, I'm sure we can tackle this in a very short time. But we need to be focused. We need to be focused. And everything that we do is for the betterment of the country. Everything thing we do is to get our country cleared of COVID. No one is doing any measures just because they like it or to target some population, nothing like that, absolutely no. It is purely to eradicate the menace from Sri Lanka and we are still lucky, you know, people were worried about that J curve, yeah. right? The exponential curve. We are still on the bottom part of the J and we have to keep it there, we have to arrest it there and we have to come back to zero. If we allow this to rise exponentially, we are going to be in a deep trouble. We cannot cope up with it. It's if, I, if I may ask you, if by any chance, if, if we, the country, everybody does, you know, f just go on uh, their day to day life and actually doesn't take responsibility, will we be in a situation like Italy? Will well, the country go towards such a, uh, you know, drastic level? Well, I would say yes, if we don't take precautions, if we don't restrict our mobility, if, if we do not listen to our health uh, uh, advisors, I'm sure we will be in an in a uncontrollable situation. And this is exactly what happened in Europe. Now, if you look at the East, Japan, South Korea, and China, they were very well disciplined societies. They listened to the orders, they followed orders, and they were mindful of their hygienic condition. But then when we came to Sri Lanka, I think India is another different mm. case altogether. Now in Sri Lanka, I see two approaches, the law, and also the self-discipline or the education, both are working in Sri Lanka because majority of our people are listening to the advice, majority of our people are abiding by the guidelines, but then when they are not, the law is there. So we are having that approach. But if you look at the, the West, which is now gone completely out of control, Italy, Spain, Germany, England, America, right? Now there, the preparedness was not there. They did not listen, they did not take it seriously. They did not, I mean, there were enough warnings. Now this started in the middle of January in Wuhan. Now we are in the middle of, uh, I mean, the first Beginning week of, April. of uh, April, right? So we, no country can say we did not know. 
no country can say we did not receive any advance warning we had all received the warnings but sri lanka took it very seriously but we need to be focused for another i don't know exactly but i wish uh, like general said as quickly as possible to come back to normal but my estimate is at least the next two weeks are crucial we need to be very mindful we need to continue with these measures and i i think if we can do that we will be okay uh, army commander one of the other uh, things that is actually in the the back burner of people's mind are the fact that if by any chance if this continues for another a month two months three months do we have enough supplies can this country sustain itself can can we actually be okay yeah of course i think honorable basil rajapaksa had very specifically told as far as the food is concerned as far as the food is concerned yes the rice and fuel stuff i mean what we essentially required to survive we have i think we have rice if you see the rice itself we can run for about for another 9 months or even for one year i think we have sufficient stuff the balance except for i think uh, there's a bit of a shortage although i'm not uh, the authority to talk about these things but since you're asking i have the knowledge it's like mm-hmm. dal and few other things may be little short but other than that i think we are very much all right one must understand it is not only a isolated case in sri lanka mm-hmm. it's a global issue you know where we get this stuff you know what has happened to india if they are not uh, sending stuff from there what can we do so we have to this is a good time i think for people of this nation to uh, be sri lanka or by sri lanka be and by sri lanka is the best thing i think everything happens for something good and we have unlike some other nations mm-hmm. think what is not available in this country do you think that anyone will starve uh, without uh, food okay no way no okay way. no way we have things to eat and even if we start today you are talking of few months yes. even if you start uh, from today growing something for the period that you are telling here yeah, we will get the harvest we can run at least we will have rice and one curry to eat <laughs> you see we are not a, we don't think we underestimate we are very rich in that way this country the people can start today even in a small scale even in a a uh, uh, thing that what somebody was trying to show that we gave cup of tea in a uh, <laughs> bottle okay you put something in that you find find that you get a plant and some uh, something <laughs> will come up so therefore we are well off i think of course when you consider well off when i said well off yes when you consider with other countries we will be surviving definitely no no doubt about it medicine wise uh what is the situation there yes according to the medical because we are in the center we are in the operation center we know that they have but of course uh one thing understand one can criticize so whether we have that and this we have to understand what is once again the global there's a short supply of certain stuff in global wise and there is there are certain rich countries they won't have they have curtail no flights going in and out things are like that happening but as of now the way that we know we are aware that we can manage but we would like to have more we would like to have more but the thing is i think the health sector is managing medicine well and already i think certain things are coming i think uh, admiral will know better than me so supplies are coming continuously uh, we have ordered few things that we feel that if we go to this level that level that is why we say we are uh, uh, not reactive we are proactive we have co- contingencies plan for all this uh, for anything for any eventuality any any area so therefore i think we should be okay um, admiral i want to pick on that uh, what is the situation with regard to medicine and all uh, if by any chance if this continues for another 3 4 months do we have the capacity to generate the medicine here in sri lanka uh, because now we see like hospital beds which were never thought of being constructed here in sri lanka coming you know people are going and constructing them uh, face masks are being uh, uh, b- made here in sri lanka and even ventilators i i we saw, saw on facebook you know it may be not on high high mm-hmm. standard but still it it gets the job done so uh are we in a situation to uh, you know if by any chance if things goes south uh doesn't uh, exactly you know uh, if you all have plan do you think we may have to look internally rather than externally well few weeks ago i saw a letter we sent to a country in the region uh, requesting medical items and i was thinking my god why are not why we are not making them in sri lanka these were not 
I mean, rocket science. These were simple things. Now we are very good in, uh, I mean, stitching garments for high-end Victoria Secrets and things like that. But we are not making a simple mask. So this is the time, as General mentioned, to think inward. Actually, Victoria Secret Secrets is now uh, also in the uh, face mask <laughs> business. <laughs> well, that's another. Not only all branded items, <laughs> yeah, all branded exactly. uh, having Gucci and all. Face mask. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think this is the time we must look at ourselves our pharmaceutical industry. I'm sure we can make our own pharmaceutical, at least most of them. A simple Panadol paracetamol tablet, we are not making enough, right? So we have the capacity, we have the technology, we have enough expertise. So we need to now think of making our own medicine. Right now, uh, General very rightly mentioned, this is a global pandemic. Even if we have enough money, we cannot get items from other, other countries. So we have to manage with what we have. Mm -hmm. And of course, coming to last week, we were coming to a slightly a critical situation regarding personal protective equipment. But right now, we are very happy because we receive a lot of stocks uh, like the face masks, the goggles, the gloves, and the gowns, the overall gowns. We have received a lot of quantities and also the test kit for PCR, the COVID test kit. Right now, uh, we, I was told that we have more than 10,000 uh, testing capacity and it's a matter of time we, we, because we have placed orders for the future as well. But all this is if this situation con continue as this. But if it rise exponentially high, as you mentioned, we will have problems of ICU beds. We will have problems of ventilators. Now these things, rightly, because there are some young, very enthusiastic people, now they are experimenting. They are getting some components from somewhere and they are trying to make a simple ventilator where the oxygen will be supplied to a required patient under certain control. Now, I know the Navy is doing a lot of work on this regard. in this regard. They are trying to fix a small CCTV camera to an ICU bed so the nurse does not have to come to the bed to check. Right? And also remote sensing, checking the, thermo, uh, the temperature of the patient. So the nurse or the medical personnel need not come. And Army, uh, the research department is doing great job. Actually, there is a committee under the general, I mean, uh, uh, under the task force. They are focused, they are directed to focus on the research and development. Now, I think we must not give up at this stage. Indeed. Whatever the inputs that we are putting, we must subject it to comprehensive testing, certification, and try to make Make them for us. Maybe in the future, who knows? We might require it, we might be able to sell it. Now, right now, many Western countries are asking from us whether we can supply them some personal protective equipment. And already we have sent some samples to UK that reached the UK Embassy High Commission two days ago. Now, if that is positive, I mean, once they do the testing, if it is okay, then we can do a mass production and send it to them because they need it much, much more than uh, us do. And we are quite okay, but we message is, we need to maintain this level. If it goes exponentially high, no, no health system can cope up with that. And we have seen it in this such, a, such highly developed countries in the West. One of the silver linings of this entire pandemic seems to be that uh, we've been asked to look at ourselves and actually yes. enrich our own country. Army Commander, finally, uh, uh, want to know, know what kind of message do you have? You're leading this particular task force in order to make sure that this crisis does not escalate from the point it is. We have managed to keep it under very low levels and uh, we are actually monitoring it in a very drastic manner. So what is your message to the people? Because next two weeks, next three weeks is going to be crucial for the country. Uh, for individuals, for families all around this country. What, what should they do and what is your message to them? It's like military. We think of our honesty, integrity. The, our integrity in military, Army, Navy, Air Force, we think that that is the number one quality one should have, the honesty. So I think if people can be disciplined and be honest to themselves, and listen to the guidelines given by the medical specialist and by the government, whatever the instructions are given to people. Every instruction is given, not just because you want to give, no. After analyzing, after analyzing the environment, the situation, these instructions are given. Every day, you know, coronavirus, this is, every day people are on research. 
we still have not found exactly what it is and we know as of today what if what we are getting we are running by that so people should be first of all people should know that it is a huge it's a very dangerous uh, virus unlike some other viruses they are very dangerous virus if you are disciplined if you have been asked to stay self quarantine then house quarantine think like that we should follow the medical advisors professional advisors we should follow then this one thing what you call is the social law physical distance that have to be so always even before i have told in this channel also this won't come to your house just because it's there no you go for shopping and you are bringing corona into your house you have to understand one thing always like when we were there for three decades war we were looking at a person coming near us we were thinking whether it's a suicide bomber think once again the same <laughs> same principle goes think like a suicide bomber whether this guy or this person has got corona we do not know okay think he has got corona keep you can't put him out only then you can keep the physical distance and be like that and you have to think you don't even know whether you have got also best thing is as a citizen of this nation my duty is to ensure that i will not give it to another person indeed so therefore i must keep distance so if this thing happen i am sure that we are all right the government will maybe lifting curfew at times thinking for the benefit of the some people who really need to get on to the road that will be done just because the curfew will lifted just to see around uh, mm. to go on a ride okay people should not do that first of all one should get protected therefore be at inside the houses unless otherwise you really require keep this discipline we will win this and we are sure that every time we say we are not a country who are lost we will never lose we will some or other win so please help citizens should help the authorities to win this covid 19 A very good message uh, to end our conversation uh, today. Uh, Army Commander Lieutenant General Shravinder Silva and Admiral Dr. Janath Kulambige, thank you very much once again coming to the program and sharing your ideas as well. That's it for tonight. Uh, I'll be back again at around 9.35 uh, with World News. Thank you for joining. Bye for now. This is Adha Dharana's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis.